The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome everyone. This is Danny Ryan from 3Will and uh, welcome you to today's webinar. We're going to be focusing on getting you up to speed on uh, Microsoft Power BI and I've got a guest here with me, um, Bo George. Bo, thanks for joining me. Thanks for, thanks for having me. You, you betcha, you betcha. And, uh, what we wanted to do was, uh, Bo, uh, about a month or so ago, he had written a blog post and uh, sort of to prepare for this. And it was on the top 10 reasons uh, you need Power BI. And what we wanted to do for this webinar was to go through what those top 10 reasons are and just use that as a way to get you up to speed. I also wanted to point out uh, that we he also did a, a nice uh, Power BI primer too. So if you wanted to get up to speed on uh, Power BI as well, that he's got a nice article out on our blog as well to get up to speed on Power BI. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Just real quickly, um, Bo focuses in on, on BI for us. He's a, uh, he's a principal consultant. Um, if you ever had the, the opportunity to work with him, he's a, a great team player. Love working with him. He's, uh, he, he's, he's in the great state of Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Is that right, Bo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the first Columbus that everybody thinks of. No, he's, he's in the other Columbus. He's in Columbus, Georgia. So uh, thanks, thanks for uh, joining remotely. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. All right. So, um, so when I when I put together that blog post, uh, you know, we do a lot of top tens on things. It's a good way to organize, and uh, it was right about the time that David Letterman was uh, retiring. So I thought, you know, I'll, I'll take a funny slant on my top ten list and kind of go outrageous with the the topics, but then talk kind of serious about the content. So, so in honor of David Letterman's departure, that's my top ten list. So awesome. So number 10, the number 10 reason that you would need Power BI is because your corporate upgrade from Office 95 is behind schedule. Um, hopefully nobody on the, on the webinar really is in that situation, but, uh, but that's where I'm starting. So, so what I first want to talk about with that is um, with Power BI Preview, which is one of the, the products or one of the technologies in the stack, there is also a, a Power BI Designer. Uh, free download, and so so if you aren't on the latest version of Excel, you can download that um, designer tool. It's specifically designed just for Power BI, um, and so with that, with it being focused purely on Power BI, it's a it's a clean experience, um, maybe a little cleaner than Excel, and and still has quite a bit of power. Um, it does only work with Power BI Preview and not Office 365 Power BI sites. Um, but you can pull data as I'm showing on the screen from just about anywhere as you'll, you'll kind of see that theme throughout um, everything from Excel to different databases and you know SQL databases, Hadoop, Azure, um, on and on the list of data sources is, is huge there um, but it does align with that, that Power BI preview experience it's a clean UI and even if you are on the latest and greatest um, office versions it's still a tool that you can download and maybe uh, used to to do specific Power BI stuff, so it's it's not just if you're on an old version. Um, certainly, I I used it, and it's you know, and I'm on the latest and greatest. So, um, but that's that's Power BI preview. Um, and then on the next screen, I kind of show a little bit more of the 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 prettiness in there. You know, so you start by getting data, which I had on the other slide, and once you get that data in, you get to shape it. And by shape it, that might mean removing columns from your data or renaming them or doing calculations, um, creating a hierarchy. If you notice up at the top, you got this manage and it looks like a series of related tables up there. So you can relate multiple queries to each other. Um, I, can do, I, can, I can do the Vanna White if you want me to, Bo. <laughs> Sweet. As long, long as we don't get us in trouble with, with John Underwood for moving the mouse too much, I always, I always think about him telling me not to do that. Don't too um, much, okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he, it was his thing. But uh, so you know, you can manage your hierarchies, and then, and then once you're in here, once you've shaped your data and sort of loaded it into your model, you can do your visualization. So, 
sort of over there on the right where your cursor is 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 a data source, and you've got your your measures and your facts for my my BI people, which are you know your your things you might want to filter on, your your x and y axis, and then the, the actual data points you want to total up, and you just kind of drag them and drop them and pick your visualization that you're going to show, and it uh, you know you get stuff that looks like what you see here. Um, really easy tool to use. It, it, it's all contingent on having a good data model, but uh, really easy to use. And you'll see that throughout all of, of the tools I talk about today, that they're, they're really pretty easy to use once you have your data. So, All right. Um, so number nine, uh, I, I thought this was pretty funny. The, the haven't taken a vacation in 27 years because no one else can create the sales report. So. Uh, you know, my, my thought there is a lot of people are your data guys, um, and, and, you know, with, with your Power BI, Microsoft's really pushing um, self-service, um, and, and I think they, they deliver on a lot of that, and one of the first uh, places that you'll see that is uh, this screenshot I'm showing here, which is um, a few actual screenshots from Excel with um, one of the first add-ins. It doesn't come with your Excel out of the box, but it's a free download to add in Power Query. And so if you're in Excel, you can sort of download this and turn it on and you get some really cool features starting with, um, you get all the normal data sources sort of like I showed back on, on Power BI Designer with SQL and, and all that sort of stuff, Excel and so on. Um, but then you also get this data catalog and data catalog is pretty pretty awesome. Um, first thing you'll notice over on the left is that there's sort of two aspects to, to a data catalog within Office 365. You've got a public version, and you can really think of that as, as the, the version that Microsoft kind of owns and um, maintains for everybody. And so they, they go out to the web, they look at census data, you notice there's wiki links there, because on Wikipedia there's tables on stuff, and so they, they cull and sort of manage all that stuff. And all you've got to do is go type a simple search and get back um, publicly available data that you might want to merge with your own, and, uh, and then you can use it. And then you can have an organizational data catalog too. So as I create workbook queries and I decide, hey, this is, you know, it took me a little time to shape this thing together and I just want to share it with people, I could actually publish it. So over on the right, sort of, see that I have a workbook that had nine different queries. And it starts from the top, where that first one was a, a public data catalog search. Um, and then the next one after that is, uh, uh oh, going laser pointer. Ooh, look um, at that. <laughs> yeah. um, and, then, and then the next one sort of represents that uh, it's an Excel data file, but it could have been any on premise, SQL, whatever sort of data source. So I've got you know, data sources coming from the public and from my internal. And then that third thing is actually where I merge the two together. Maybe my common key between the two is a, a stock symbol or something, a ticker. And so um, you, you can do that. You merge them together, and then you get to your um, data model. So once you've created your query, you load it to Power Pivot, which is what Danny's showing now. And here in the data model, you can actually establish your relationships between all those queries too. So in the middle, that S&P 500 came from the public web, and then I decided that sector and sub-industry there at the bottom actually represented a hierarchy, a parent and child relationship. And then, you know, I related one of my Excel data sources to a key in that, uh, in that public data source um, and, and defined my data model. And so the other really key thing to pay attention to in Power Pivot, I feel like, is that um, when you get to sharing your files later, Loading the data from your Power Queries into Power Pivot as opposed to in Excel is a really key thing to keep your workbook size down, to play nicely with Power BI online, and to get really good compression. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but uh, Power Pivot is your modeling tool. And this might be the data steward in your organization uh, sort of modeling this stuff for you or, or just about anybody. The tools really are pretty flexible and you can do as much or as little as you want there. Hadoop, there so, it is. 
Yeah, I think this shows my age a little bit going back to that song. But uh, um, yeah, so I, I could just see management walking around saying, Hadoop, there it is. Um, so that's that's number eight, and that that really is my way of speaking to just the the crazy number of data sources that Microsoft is making available um, within all the tool sets. And so this this image I have here, I think I pulled from the Power BI uh, website, and just just to give you an idea, I mean you've got everything from the the normal database stuff down on the bottom, MySQL even, IBM DB2, uh, Hadoop over there, HDFS. Uh, Postgres, and then you've got HD Insight, which is is Hadoop and Azure, and Azure SQL Exchange, um, and then you've got analysis services for the user that, that that have already invested in Power BI, and then even cool stuff like um, your Salesforce objects up there, your emails using SendGrid, which is an Azure emailing system, um, all kinds of stuff, and then GitHub is kind of a cool one that I. Um, when I was doing some learning early on with this, that uh, there was an example out there where you you basically point to a GitHub repository in the in inside of Microsoft Power BI Preview. And the cool thing about stuff like GitHub is not only would it give you a data source, you know, your rows and columns, but it actually came with some pre-made reports and dashboards just by connecting to the the repository. So you would see check-ins, check-outs, contributors, all of that sort of cool stuff. Um, coming from GitHub for you, so you almost had a, a leg up by, by picking a data source like GitHub. So lots and lots of data sources, and, and uh, you'll see them throughout all the products from Excel to Power BI Online to the Power BI Designer and stuff. So, And then the last thing I wanted to say on this slide before we go is, um, sorry, Danny, uh, is you know the other thing people think about is, well, I got all my data on premise, and so um, for on-premise data, you know, if you're in Office 365 in the cloud, they do support that. Um, there's a thing called a data management gateway, and so your on-premise data, you install a piece of software on there, uh, you register that gateway with the data management gateway service in the cloud, specify a proto protocol like HTTPS and all that sort of stuff, and then and then your on-premise data is available in the cloud. So. Um, so, you know, it's not just cloud data sources either. So number seven, uh, email inbox is referred to as my reports repository. I, uh, you know, this isn't just a Power BI thing, but uh, I think we've all been guilty of this in the past, and I think we're all getting better, but uh, people email around files all the time, and when it's a report, it typically is bigger um, it's sometimes more volatile. It's got information where you want it to be the single source of the truth. And so, um, so don't email around files, right? In Office 365, it's really all about sharing um, files. So you know that's that's how we do things at Three Wheel, and um, and it plays into other products like Delve and OneDrive for Business, where your shares help you help. Um, provide you more information about things you're interested in or just going back to things that were shared with you and so on. And so, you know, with Power BI, uh, sharing, of course, is, is built into that um, from the, from the get-go. And, and what you get with the actual Power BI app, which is what Danny is showing here, is um, you just add this app to any, any old SharePoint site, and when you do, you go to the app and it'll it'll roll up all your Excel files um, and allow you to uh, feature them and create uh, little thumbnail images for them. So you can decide which Excel documents in your site are are worthy of of being being featured on your Power BI site. And so you get this this nice um, I won't call it a dashboard, but this nice layout to to more easily see what's in an Excel file and launch it. Um, and then you know the little stars on them. In addition to sharing a particular file with somebody or this entire Power BI um, app, you could also um, favorite it. And so favorites are are a pretty cool way to um, bookmark it or just uh, be able to get back to it later. So you know it, we all go through lots and lots of site collections, and you may not remember which site something was on. And so favoriting it is a is a cool way to uh, remember it, not 
I'll show that on the, the next uh, slide as well. So, um, so once you've favorited it, um, what you also have in Power BI up there in the in the left on the the waffle, I guess is what it's called, or the app launcher, or the you know the hamburger that's cut all ways, whatever that thing is called. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it. I think it's called it's, it's, I, you, uh, waffle. Is what I've heard. So go with yeah, waffle. Waffle waffle's the latest term. So yes. I'm sure Waffle House is happy. <laughs> so, so what you get in that that waffle is a um, a Power BI app. And the Power BI app takes you here to to my Power BI, which is is the personalized version. So the things that are showing on this page are all my my favorited Power BI um, or or really Excel documents that are rolled up into a, a central place for me. And these might be in site collections all over the place, um, and so I can get to them easily here. And then over on the right hand side, I've also got. Uh, Power BI sites that I favorited, so the you know the ones that I want to go back to, and it's even showing uh, numbers for featured and favorited and stuff like that there. And then down below that is sort of a little bit of the discovery aspect, so it's showing me the popular uh, uh, Power BI sites, so you know things where action is going on, and maybe you know I've got access and I want to go see what's there. Um, I can get to it pretty easily from from my Power BI, which is is nice. Um, one thing I, I skipped over on the previous slide, if you could go back to that one, Danny, is down here at the bottom, I'll hit on this a little bit more later, but there's featured questions. And so with Power BI, you um, the, both in Power BI technical preview and Power BI for Office 365, you can ask questions of the data within a report. So maybe there's not even a chart or a graph for something, and you can just go click on Ask with Power BI up in the top right, and you will launch to uh, a little uh, text box where you can start asking a question of a particular workbook and uh, getting back results and stuff like that. So it's a uh, it's it's a pretty cool thing, and I I, I like it a lot, and I'll talk a lot more about it um, a little bit later on. But that's that's uh, another thing, which is your featured questions and stuff like that. So. And Bo, just just as a um, sort of a newbie question, so is Power BI like an add-on for for your Office 365 instance, or what what it, what do you what is it? It it is it. I, I had a I had a lot of questions about the licensing with it because the prices you keep hearing vary, and all of that sort of stuff. But it is a per seat add-on to Office 365. I've heard people say with E3, E4 that they got it free or something, but I'm, uh -huh. I can't confirm or deny that. But I think right now it's like $10 per seat uh, add-on. And, um, you know, it gives you stuff like the site we're seeing here now. So if, if you didn't have a Power BI license, you wouldn't be able to access this app. Okay. Um, you might be able to access the Excel documents directly in the document library underneath it. Um, but uh, as we, I'll show a little bit later, there will be some some behavior differences depending on if you're licensed or not and stuff like that. So you might get a only a subset of your organization might get Power BI too. You know, only certain people. Yeah. 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 Certainly, you can decide who who it uh, matters for. So. Okay. Great. Yeah, and if other people have questions as we're going through this, I didn't go through this in the beginning, but feel free to to ask questions through the the GoToWebinar app and, and we'll queue them up here for the end if, if you do have something we want to focus in on. Um, yeah. right. uh, while, while we're on this, before I move on to the next one too. Oh, I got sorry. you. I went so, I was almost there. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, up at the top, there's a, a link that says favorites and data and I just wanted to point out that, uh, so favorites are the things I favorited and then data it's kind of cool. So way back earlier, maybe two, three slides ago, we talked about Power Query. And so that's one thing that will show up in Power Query is when I publish my Power Queries to Office 365, if I click on the Data tab, I'll actually get a couple of cool things. I'll get some statistics about how often it's used or, or how many people have searched and found it and things like that using uh, the, the catalog search. Um, and then I can just see my, my Power Query queries that I've published or those that others have published um, and some cool stuff like that as well as uh, data sources that I've used that are inside of those power queries. So 
that kind of gives you a little bit more insight to the data that you're you're sharing. And I'm not going to go to the next slide until you tell me to. I'm ready. I'm ready now. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, so number six, Excel spreadsheet is so big, people just call it Big Mama. I, I immediately had Martin Lawrence's picture in my head when I, when I, when I wrote this, but uh, yeah, you know, it goes back to not emailing around big spreadsheets, but uh, sort of to the point you asked about before with licensing, um, that will come into play too. So my, my next slide, you can move on to it, and I'll... I'll talk to it. So unfortunately, it's not like a pretty picture like some of the others, but but when I was doing some research, I really liked this grid because it sort of described the behaviors based on if you have a license for Power BI or if not and what to expect and things like that. And so there's a few thresholds you'll notice in here, the 0 to 10 megabyte thing. So, you know, if, if it's a 10 megabyte or smaller file, you can upload it into SharePoint. And if you don't have Power BI, you can still launch that file in um, the Office Web App Solution Excel services and so on. And that would just be navigating to it in a document library, clicking the file, opening it, and you see it in Excel online. Now, if you get past a 10 megabyte file and you're in SharePoint online and you click it, um, and you're not in, and you don't have Power BI, you might actually get the prompt that says, hey, uh, you need to download this thing because it's, it's too big to show online. And so, you know, you get, that's your first place where if you're not licensed, it'll be a behavior difference <clears throat> for a, a Power BI user versus not. Um, and then the other thing to think about is how much of that 10 megabyte file is in a data model or not, and, and by that, it'll affect the behavior as well because um, with Power BI, what you really want is all your data in the data model. And that's because Power Pivot has really awesome compression algorithms. Um, I, I came across an example online where it was like 92% compression, and I, I saw similar um, behavior where I had two 50 megabyte files and then um, I was able to pull those into my data model and my total workbook size was like five megabytes and not even all of that was workbook, it was the data model inside of the workbook. And so what that means is despite having a hundred megabytes of source data, I was really still well within the just the, even the minimum 10 megabyte file size. So, uh, so it would open up in Excel services just fine. And then if I did exceed that because I had a Power BI license, you can go all the way up to a 250 megabyte workbook size. So um, it's really, it's, you know, this is an awesome chart for, for understanding the different uh, behaviors you'll get because they can, they can confuse people quite a bit. So. And no, no need to memorize that URL. Next week, you guys, everybody who's uh, registered for the webinar will get a follow-up email that will have a link to download the presentation. So you can get the, grab the URL at that point in time. Cool. So number, number five, everyone keeps telling you how much cooler the charts on the Fitbit site are than yours. So this one just goes back to as, a, as a, a Fitbit user, when I first started using their software, I was really impressed with their, their graphs and charts and things like that. And so they were simple, they were clean, but they, they communicated data. And so, you know, I, I think it also speaks to um, how we as consumers are driving enterprise software, right? Like we, we always want the new cool things that we're using on our phones or just on the public web. To, to kind of roll down into the enterprise. So um, I think with with um, the Power BI products, that, that is really the case. And so this, this picture I'm showing here is one from a, a Microsoft example that shows Power Map, which is uh, another um, visualization that you have available. And, uh, you know, what it's showing, it's, it's showing quite a bit. It's got a bar chart that is based on geography combined with a heat map all sort of superimposed over Florida. So you got a lot of information communicated in a, in a really small space. So it's, a, it's just one example of a really cool visualization that's out there and available. The, the number of visualizations out there, I, didn't, I don't think I've counted them, 
but it's it's all your standard fare, like um, the different types of charts, a bar chart, a line chart, uh, pie charts, and so on. And then you've got stuff like a scatter chart and a bubble chart, and um, and and line charts, and then of course the power map. And and bubble charts is actually for some reason has been been one of my favorites. Uh, for for anybody that uh, doesn't much with Power BI and and um, TED Talks, there's a TED Talk. It's it's got to be four or five years old now from Hans Rolling, and it was showing developing countries and their health versus wealth over time, and and it used a bubble chart. So so you know imagine going up you have maybe health, and then going to the right on the bottom you have wealth. Um, and then below that's a little play button that's got like from 1960 to 2000. So you visually you could see how a bubble grew and shrank in size and moved up and down, you know, on the x and y axis over time by clicking the play button. So not only do you have just sort of a static, but you you have an interactive chart where you click a button and and it just moves. And so you you gain a lot of insight through stuff like that. And that sort of feature is built right into Power View as well. If you have a a time dimension to your data that can be a play axis so that you can see anything as it changes over time. And is that is um, Bo, is that what this is down here or that uh, this one might be yeah I think it, it might be it doesn't show that the uh, okay. um, dates but it, it's that's sort of how it looks it's got that play button uh -huh. there and then you move it right across and so in, in this case it might show lines growing and shrinking over time. And is this so, um, and this this one in particular? This data is this coming like from one of those public data sources, or do you know where this is coming from? I think this is the, um, it, where I found it online was all a part of the examples yeah. that they had, and I think it's um, I think it's probably not public data, but some of it certainly could come from public data. Lots of those data sources out there do have um, this sort of information. Gotcha. Uh, the, the other stuff that you have in terms of visualizations are um, you've got matrices. So, so if you have repeating data and maybe you want, you know, repeating charts, you can uh, use matrices or, or cards to sort of repeat that. I've seen that with like the metal count. You might have each state's flag and then um, the number of metals and things like that. So not only do you have just a single chart, but you might have a repeating chart. Uh, horizontally or vertically um, that's sort of grouped together too. And so I, I mentioned the flag and, and PowerView does stuff like that too where you can actually pull in an image and relate it to some data too so that visually you have like a um, maybe it's a product and then you have statistics for a product so you could show sort of a picture of your product alongside your charts for it and stuff like that. Great. And then is one other thing. It's been around for quite a while, but that's your, you know, you can put that on a chart and use it to um, filter your data with the click of a, a button. Um, so it's a it's another another visualization technique. So I think that's I think that's all I got on that one. So um, number four, the support center is really into NASCAR. So you know what with with Power BI or with charting and reporting in general, you a lot of times you think of it as as a pool sort of mentality. So I've got I've got a chart or I've got a graph and it's showing, and then I know hey it's it's not going to pull any new data until the nightly refresh or the hourly refresh or the weekly refresh or something like that, right? So you, you get into that mentality, and that's all well and good because I think that's uh, sort of standard for most things. You want to, you know, wait till a certain period to, to pull in fresh data. Um, but one thing along the way that I came across was uh, a presentation or a demo from Amir Nets that I thought was it was really awesome and it, and it struck the the developer chord in me, which was, um, hey, I can program this stuff. So I'm not only using tools. But there's a REST API for Power BI available, so any applications out there can actually, instead of writing data to a database, then letting somebody come and query that database later and show it in a chart, it can, they can flip it and they can push data from their applications directly into Power BI. 
um, using uh, stuff like Azure AD and it uses OAuth 2.0 um, to push stuff into um, Power BI, which I think is awesome. And the, the Amir's presentation here, which I, I just took a, a screenshot of his actual YouTube video, and I have the link down below uh, for somebody that wants to see Amir get really, really excited. Um, it's a great video to watch. But uh, it, uh, I forget what conference it was at, but basically he had an interactive session with the audience where there were sound sensors out in the audience and half of the audience said the word C and the other half said hops. Um, and that data fed back in from those sensors into an Azure Event Hub. The Azure Event Hub then um, used Azure Stream Analytics to push it across to Power BI. So those little charts at the top of his screen there um, were actually updating real time as people chanted sort of each side of it, it was one side versus the other. And I just think the the ability to, to push data into Power BI, Power BI Preview, um, is really super powerful for applications. I could just imagine, you know, that's why I went back to Support Center, because that's the, the type of audience I could see sitting there actually watching gauges real time uh, to get a heartbeat on anything, servers, transactions, all of that sort of stuff um, that, that you don't want to wait uh, even a minute on or something like that. So. Um, that all that's possible in Power BI as well. So this is my uh, my, no, my you're, not, one. you're not making fun of marketing, are you? Come on. <laughs> yeah, I, I figure you would like that, Danny. Yeah. Um, so the marketing team just got their iPads, and they immediately threw their desktop out the window. You know, I, I actually think this one's maybe not that far from the truth. Um, that just, you know, people today are, are are all about their devices. We're all mobile. It's got, to, it's got to work on iPad. I don't know how many how many things or how many people I've talked to saying we really want it to work on an iPad, um, which usually isn't too bad. Um, and then an iPhone and a, and a mobile phone. And the the awesome thing with um, Power BI. For Office 365, which is the um, is the add-in to SharePoint, is that it will render out HTML5. Now, the the weird thing is if you're in if you're accessing it in a desktop app and you're in Internet Explorer, you're probably going to see Silverlight. So when you go to your uh, Power BI site or you uh, open up an Excel file from there, you'll probably see it right now render in. Silverlight, and then down in the bottom right-hand side, you can actually change it to HTML5 if you are in the browser. Um, but if you happen to hit that same site and you're not on Internet Explorer on a desktop, you're on a like a an Android phone or something like that, then you'll actually get to see the HTML5 version and interact with it that way um, by default. So um, very very cool that uh, HTML5 is embraced. I think I think. Getting away from ActiveX controls, Silverlight, and all that's uh, uh, certainly good. Um, and then the thing that you're showing here is, um, you know, I think I think we've all seen this from Microsoft over the last year at least, is that they are, you know, they're not afraid to develop apps for other platforms now. So you know, of course, with Power BI, there's going to be the Windows app for your your Surface, um, but with Power BI Preview, there is the um, the iOS app as well, so you can uh, go to um, PowerBI.com and download the the app, or go to the App Store, connect it to your your Power BI preview site, and see your charts there. Um, Interacting with with them with touch gestures, as it suggests. Um, on the left was a screenshot of an iPad from their site, and then on the right was if you're on a um, iPhone, you can interact with it as well. So it's you know, it's, I think it's a testament to Microsoft really uh, pushing pushing apps for all the platforms out there, and uh, maybe they'll have one for Android pretty soon. I don't, I haven't found out for sure if they do, but but even if they don't, um, accessing it through the browser is actually pretty pretty decent. And so I um, I have a screenshot actually that I took from my phone, and the, as the next screenshot, so this is just my phone on. Um, on Chrome, 
and I accessed my development Office 365 site where I had an Excel document um, and opened it up. And this one, had I been in my IE on my desktop, would have first rendered in Silverlight, um, but now it's strictly HTML5 on my phone. Um, and that's really not necessarily just a Power BI only thing, that's sort of Office web apps, but uh, you know, going back to those size constraints and all that sort of stuff, that's where you start to get more mileage if you have Power BI with larger files and things like that. So, um, but I, d I definitely think that was pretty cool that uh, I could could access that real easily on my phone and and uh, interact with the data. Um, I, I meant to mention this earlier, so stuff like um, go back one second. Sorry, Danny. So uh, one thing I could do on my phone is I could actually click on something like customer discretionary spending there, um, and it would actually filter the NASDAQ and the uh, New York Stock Exchange on my phone too. So that that's in all the the, the technologies, uh, that ability to filter other charts from your click. So, sorry about right. my, sorry about my premature slide movement here. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so number two, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, I like this one. So focus groups have determined that everybody likes dashboard thingy. thingies. And I, I use it like that because, you know, dashboard is such an overused term that, that a lot of times when somebody says I want a dashboard, I, you know, I'm like, well, what, I don't know what that means. Is it charts, graphs, reports, what, you know, what is your, your definition of a dashboard? Um, so, so I just call them dashboard thingies. Um, but, but all the technologies, you know, when I showed the Power BI for Office 365, um, that's sort of, you know, that's reports and rolling it up. And so your dashboard in that sense is more driven from your Excel document libraries and what you feature, um, which is perfectly fine. But in um, where I really like uh, Power BI and where I think it really starts to shine is in Power BI Preview. So Power BI Preview, um, you know, I think it's built from the ground up with uh, business intelligence in mind, and it's not so much an add-in. So what I'm showing here in this screenshot is actually a dashboard. And, um, you know, the way this thing comes to be is that you start with a data set down there on the, the bottom left, and you pull your data in from all those those data sources we talked about earlier. And then once you get your data sources in, you can define a, a report. And your report might have one uh, visualization on there, or more than likely it'll have five or ten or something like that. Um, and then what you can decide is, hey, I want to pin, you know, one of my visualizations to a dashboard. And so even though this screenshot is sort of showing all related dashboards, I could actually have things pinned from different places, from different reports that had a different underlying data sets. And so my dashboard is really about, here's all the interrelated things that matter to me, um, sort of all pinned in one place, um, regardless of their reports and data sets. And, and so, you know, and then the, the dashboard is really interactive. You can uh, uh, drag and drop things, make them smaller. Uh, I think of it a lot like your start in uh, Windows 8 where you've got that metro and you can say, hey, this, this icon is, is twice as big as the other. And so you can do that sort of stuff in here to, to um, size around your things in your dashboard so that you get it to look how you want. And then, um, you know, so it's still tied to your underlying report. So you might click on one of these shapes in here. And when you click on that shape, it'll actually take you to the underlying report page. And on that report page might be where you originally defined all five of your interrelated reports for that data source or something. So it's sort of a, you know, it's, it gives you a way to drill into the details, so to speak, of, of your data. And it's super flexible. I still feel like it's really pretty simple to work with. Um, and then the other thing that I didn't mention here in Power BI Preview is, you know, you can, if you have a data source that's well defined, you can do your uh, drag and drop and create your reports right here in the UI. So you don't, for some stuff, you wouldn't even have to have Power BI Designer. You wouldn't have to have um, 
Excel, you could do it right here in the UI as well, you know, based on a data set that you pulled in. So that's pretty cool. And it, I, uh, I didn't, I should have captured the screenshot, but that GitHub Office Dev PNP is the one where I just pointed to the, the Office Developers Patterns and Practices GitHub. And once I pulled the data from there, I had really cool dashboards for free with zero work for me to see how many commits, what changes, who the top contributors were, all sorts of stuff. Um, all and all I had to do was point at a data source, and and it filled in, it filled in my data sets, it filled in my reports, and it filled in my dashboards. So it was really cool. And you got to this is it, look, I see the waffle menu up there. You got this um, just by navigating through the waffle menu, or how did you get to this? No, that, so, so right now in Power BI I preview, the waffle is a fake waffle. Oh my so goodness. Click on that. Yeah, it, it actually, in a, in a class I was in recently, I got somebody else, but uh, they, they have it to make it look like it's integrated. But if you go back to um, slide number 12. Okay. Slide number 12. Let me see all slides. Gotcha. The, the yeah. easiest way for somebody to get to it, if they are in Office 365 now, uh -huh. is uh, there's this little uh, tickler that's been, I think it's been out there for months and months now, um, over up in the top right. This thing? Introducing power. Yep. So when you click Try It Now, it'll take you right into it. Um, and then you can book that mark, that bookmark that URL and go back to it. I think it's um, I, I actually have it right here. It is app.powerbi.com is where it is. Um, but that's the easiest way to get to it. So. Gotcha. All right. Let's get back to the slide we were on before. You all wrapped up with this one. Yep. Yep, so that's our focus group. And number one, I can hear the drumming, no one else can, but brrrr. <laughs> Paul Schaefer, huh? Yes. So, and the number one reason you need Power BI is uh, reporting strategy code name Whack-A-Mole is really killing your arm. So, you know, I, I, I use that in jest, but when I, I really think about it, um, if, if you're in a scenario where you feel like uh, you're playing a little bit of whack-a-mole with your report consumers. Um, I actually think that's sort of a good thing because what it means, at least from a, a value proposition of, of your reporting, it means that people are interested, right? It means that people want to learn more about the data. They want to try for a, a newer and a deeper understanding of the data. So I think if you're in that situation, it's it's great. It means you've got a lot of hunger for reports. Um, the problem is, you you know, if it's simple report changes, you, you just want to give them the data and let them do it. And that's what self-service BI is really all about is, is enabling your users to try to make sense of the data and you just make sure that they, they have the right data to use. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of mentioned natural language query earlier, and so that's this is where I really want to highlight it and say how awesome I think it is. Now, it, it is as awesome as your data model allows it to be. Um, so, you know, you that 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 process in Power Query of shaping your data and Excel of modeling your data and making sure that your columns are defined as the right type as calculations and that your column names are meaningful and and all of that work is really, really important um, because when you put it in um, Microsoft Power BI Preview or when you put it in the uh, Power BI for Office 365, those the intelligence that natural language query is going to have is really based on that data model. And so what's really awesome here is if you see the, the little text bar across the top, is I, I started typing a question or, or sort of a statement and it's it's doing autocomplete it's looking at the words that I'm typing and determining if it's a um, if it's a, a measure that I'm looking for or a dimension and sort of suggesting some questions that uh, might be close to what I'm looking for 
And so I can click on them in the little drop down as I'm going through and, and see it. And then I can sort of tweak parts of this. And the whole time, it's rendering you know different visualizations underneath that make sense for that. So um, this you know this is a chart that didn't exist anywhere. It was, for lack of a better word, it was created out of thin air based on me asking questions of the data. Um, and, and I just think that that is really cool. Um, I don't know how many of us go to Google and say, what is the, and you see all those auto suggestions of, hey, that's my question. So it's, it's um, I think it's a great way to ask more questions of the data. And then, you know, you see over on the right that you can pin this data source so that other people don't have to ask the same question. You can pin it to your dashboard, keep it for later, and all that sort of stuff. And then it'll, you know, it'll update with um, new data. So natural language query, I think, is just is just awesome. Um, and then I think on the next slide I'm showing, so that was Power BI technical preview. Here is the same sort of scenario within um, Power BI for Office 365. So in this case, you know, my data source is an Excel document, and so I've typed the question, how many metals by country? And of course, metal is, I, I guess, a, a a value in the, the Excel document. And so when I say by country, it also suggests by Olympics or nationality or continent. And in this case, because I use the word country, it knows that that's geography. And so instead of rendering a line chart or a bar chart, it's actually rendering a, a Bing map with stuff on there, even with the bubbles on it. Um, so that you can see, you know, North America's got a big bubble and then um, out there, I guess maybe Bermuda is a little bit smaller bubble and stuff like that. And if I decide that the map isn't the visualization I want, over here on the right to the of the map, you can pick other visualizations of your data. Uh, so that's that's pretty cool. And um, you know, this is this I think this is a feature that a uh, just a consumer of the data can come in and ask these sorts of questions. Um, so it's maybe the simplest interaction with the data without even having to crack open. Excel or Dashboard Designer or anything. Um, and of course, as I mentioned before, these could be featured questions. So once I get it where I want it, I could pin it, save it, and make it a featured question for other people. So I could search for stuff like uh, how many people have problems with premature slide forwarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure that I'm sure that's a you know small number. And it's, <laughs> it's my Oh, and then, and um, sorry, you so wrapped up with this one. I think so. I was just looking and and um, yeah, I think we, we hit on all the other self service and this, stuff. And this looks like this is this is pulling. If I look at this, this is pulling from a Excel spreadsheet from this Olympic sample. Yep, yep. So that you know the way that came in there is that it was originally it was uploaded in a document library and then it was. Uh, in the Power BI site, it was um, enabled, basically. And then once it's enabled, you could come over here and choose it. So if I click that drop down, some other Excel spreadsheets would be available to choose from and ask questions of. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, this all starts at the document library, which we all know and love from SharePoint. Um, and then you can ask questions of it. Now, it, it, that's Power BI for Office 365, obviously. Power BI technical preview, you don't have to start with SharePoint. Awesome. And then we've got some questions here, if you don't mind me relaying those. Okay. That's okay. Uh, Boris had a question. At, he's, he's nice to hear from you again, Bo. Can, you, can Power BI consume data sources exposed using uh, REST, B, REST API? Uh, yes. Yeah. So OData is another source I guess I jumped over. Um, but certainly you can. Awesome. And Amanda, just to clarify, the only way to use Power BI in Office 365 is to set up the data management gateway, correct? In order to have the ODBC connection in the cloud be able to uh, refresh the data. That's to reach into on-premise data? Um, Data management gateway. Um, yes, Amanda says yes. I have confirmation. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, 
yeah, the, the, as far as I know, the data, data management gateway is the, the only way to get into that on-premise data. And in a, in a class recently, or it was actually at the SharePoint Saturday, um, we sort of pulled the audience. We were all just talking, and, and you know, to, to be honest, the, the data management gateway is, I think it's probably an awesome service, but there were a little bit of pains with setting it up and getting it configured, so I, you know, I think the documentation makes it sound pretty easy, but there's obviously with authentication to on-premise, there's going to be some quirks, but it, it has been shown to work. So, Awesome. Any other questions? If you do, fire them away. Um, if not, Bo, I appreciate you taking the time to share what you've learned so far. And for everybody who's attending, we had a great response. Um, Really, if I mean this is quite a, quite a bit of a teaser. There's a lot of things that we could, you know, different directions that we could go into. My hope is, is if uh, if there are some things that you wanted to take a look at with regards to Power BI and using Power BI with some of uh, your data, I think that's really where it comes to life. And so, would love to do some follow up um, sessions with folks who want to learn more. Uh, and you know, and sit down together and and uh, you know share some of Bo's knowledge and get into it uh, together. Um, I've also I've shared in the handout section. I went ahead and uh, put the PowerPoint in there as well. If you want to download it from uh, the GoToWebinar app, it's it's in there as well. Um, I also wanted before we have uh, wrap up here, and, and it's good we're wrapping up before the hour. Uh, um, we uh, have a, some great upcoming events. Uh, next up, uh, we have another person from uh, Columbus uh, sharing. Lane is going to be doing a session on security in Office 365. So if you look on the Three Wheel site in the events section uh, in July, we have a, a free understanding Office 365 security options webinar that's coming up. Uh, branding apps um, and some other webinars. We're trying to do them uh, every month, every other month, uh, and cover some interesting topics. Um, Bo, again, thank you for your time. I'm going to check the questions one last time here. Uh, thanks, Boris, for the comment. It looks like we're, we're all set. Um, again, this is going to be recorded. I'll send out a um, you see an email next week from me that has a link to the recording and if you wanted to uh, download the pre presentation. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Bo, again for your time. Thank you. It was fun. Great, great. Well, everybody, have a wonderful day, and thanks so much for attending this webinar. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.